Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar, the weather warnings, the GFS, GM, Eastern WF, GFS and Eastern WF ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office 5 day precipitation and temperature. Now we have quite chilly conditions around the next 24 or 48 hours with some winteriness over high ground but for many areas it's just colder than average conditions with some frost and ice overnight. And beyond that, into next week, it does look like we are going mild, westerly, and potentially stormy, as we alluded to in yesterday's video. There isn't any massive consistent signal other than the general direction of our weather patterns will be coming in from the west, which I know is not a particularly pleasant um, direction if you're looking for anything other than low pressure, wind, and rain. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe, and remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now if we do have a look at the live radar, you can see we have quite an interesting setup. You can see a weather front across parts of northern Germany, through Belgium, Netherlands, down through Jersey and northern France. That is where the cold air is sort of cut off. Uh, behind that, we're into much fresher air, and that is reaching many parts of southern England at the moment, and spreading in quite chilly conditions. Temperatures will be only around 6 to 8 degrees for highs, feeling colder with a north to northwesterly breeze, feeling a couple degrees colder. That's so going to be chilly, chilly on what we had recently. But the main risk of any wintriness is further northwards, you can see there's a few showers through the northwest of England, but majority of the showers through Northern Ireland and many parts of Scotland. You can see this more enhanced area of precipitation is around the centre of a low spiring, around the centre of a small little low pressure system. It's going to be gusty winds and snow over higher ground. Now you can see if we do zoom in a little bit, all that snow is falling mainly over high ground hills mountains areas a few hundred meters in elevation gain so not expecting anything massive by any means but it'll be decent for any uh, any ski resorts up there ski slopes um, and of course snow packs over the higher mountains we could be seeing a good five to ten centimeters from this but for low-lying areas still expecting it to be rain potentially becoming more icy through the evening um, as we do see those temperatures plummet and we see that freeze away but yeah, um, not looking amazingly wintry, but it is a lot more wintry than we've had recently. Um, so um, yeah, we've got to have a look at this. Um, and there are some wintry hazards out there, so do make sure you keep an eye out for that. If we do have a look at the weather warnings, though, we didn't have a look at them yesterday, um, as it didn't feel like we needed to really. But I'll just briefly skim over them, um, if anyone um, wanted to know. So we have a yellow warning, it's by 11am, so... This will expire by the time you're watching this video. Uh, but again, one to two or two to five centimeters potentially at 200 meters of elevation. Um, so that's not particularly not particularly low by any means. Uh, but 10, 10, centimeters, 10 centimeters over 400 meters. So very much the highest route to seeing any winchiness. Um, and of course, icy surfaces um, as we head through Thursday morning uh, or through today and into Friday as well, where that free freezes. We have a wind warning that again expires midday, so before we watch this again, uh, 75 to 70 up to 75 miles per hour along the coast, and maybe 50 miles per hour, uh, perhaps 60 miles per hour through Thursday. And of course there is a yellow warning, and again expires in a couple hours time. Wintry showers bring a risk of ice on Wednesday night, especially in the west and north. These risks will continue, but just probably won't be um, as widespread as these yellow warnings um, have them. So we will still be seeing ice quite widely, really, across the British Isles over the next 24 hours, especially tonight into tomorrow, where temperatures do fall away. Where any precipitation falling, we could be seeing some slick surfaces too. So do stay, uh, stay, stay vigilant for that. Make sure you keep an eye um, on the ground, because, of course, black ice is very difficult to spot. So do take care out there. Even though it hasn't been wintry so far, um, of course, last last thing we want is people getting hurt when we do see a little bit of a tad of wintriness like we're seeing at the moment. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS run, have a look at the next um, couple of weeks. Now, you can see that northwesterly wind at the moment, that small little low, low, low pressure system towards Scotland. Um, but beyond that, high pressure will topple and we will just go into a big westerly phase. There will be colder sectors, but there will also be milder sectors. You see that black line between the um, oranges and the blues? That is where the general area of the jet stream is. And you can see it is coming in from a westerly direction over the top of about northern England. So it is going to be, yeah, not particularly pleasant. Further northwards, though, we could still stay in cold air mass which isn't too unusual for this time of year, around average temperatures potentially there, and that would deliver quite a lot of snow over higher ground. 
Uh, beyond that, beyond day 10, we just, yeah, stay those purples to our north, stay really unsettled in Westley. And you can see these small low-pressure systems spiralling up, especially towards Scotland, could become name storms, as we alluded to yesterday, could be very unsettled. Right towards the end of the run, we actually do see a bit of a pressure build in the south. But once again, I don't know how much to make of that, as we continue to see small changes in the longer term, but they never really come into this sort of 7 to 10 day time frame. But one thing that's consistent is that big core of blues and purples and pinks over uh, the North Pole, symbolising a very compact and strong polar vortex throughout the atmosphere, really giving uh, a westerly flow and sort of dashing any hopes of any major cold weather. Now, if we do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Now, once again, you can see westerly winds coming in next week. And you can see high pressure trying to build in the south, but always getting flattened by the low pressure system so you can just see it is truly a flat westerly flow really not looking particularly exciting by any means as i said again could be some name storms within there could be some lively conditions around as well and however we get a westerly wind um with quite chilly air masses as well uh, or oscillating air masses as we head into uh towards well through february the sun strength starts to increase and we can really start to get convection popping off um, and we could, yeah, see some very unstable conditions, some big snowfalls um, for a period of time if we do see cold rain masses in the north with convection, but we could also see some very heavy rain in the south. Um, and the last thing we want with this, which is possible, is something um, like a moisture conveyor belt with the air just coming in from the west to southwest, bringing moisture in and getting orographic rainfall, i.e. over the higher ground. That's the last thing we would want with this. But it is potentially going to set up like that. It all depends again on the exact wind direction. So that's not a forecast by any means, but that's something that could happen as a result of this sort of pattern with just moisture coming in off the Atlantic. We could be seeing stationary weather fronts as well, around as well. It does look quite mobile, but again, stationary weather fronts is possible where we see that boundary of milder and colder air, especially across northern England, potentially. But again, these situations are are very very sort of subtle um, and small shifts can make drastic impacts on uh, what we get at the surface so we'll have to see exactly how it does play out but it's not looking particularly pleasant by any means now if we have a look at the east mwf run see how that does compare again you can see uh, low pressure moving back in over the next few days and you see these small little low pressure systems spiral up by Sunday, and that's where we're going to see some enhanced rainfall from that um, that little low pressure system through Sunday. We'll have a look at that in a minute on the G uh, on the UK Met Office run, and then we just go mild and westerly. Really, ECWF has a go at trying to build some heights up towards the UK and Scandinavia. Don't think it's going to come off by any means. And uh, in this scenario, we'd just be bringing in a westerly wind. But if it did get going, we could be seeing easterly winds. But I very much doubt that. We've seen quite uh, quite a few times so far this winter at day ten some. A run specifically the ECWF actually trying to build a Scandinavian high, but it never comes off, um, and we have been disappointed by it. So, not looking too much into that at this stage, um, but I definitely do think um, westy winds are favoured um, at least for the next week or two. Now, if we do have a look at the ensembles, you can see very much the temperature is around or above average. You can see for the UK, uh, for the London, we're seeing still a little bit of a drop over the next few hours um, as we head down to around minus 5 at 850 HBA for the next couple of days, all the way through to, to around Saturday morning, where temperatures start to rise once again to around average to above average, then drop again slightly below average, then return once again to very much above average, and then we sort of stay around below am above average at times and again it's a zonal sine wave which i've alluded to before where we see a lot of temperatures up and below average um and we do yeah just see a lot of mild sectors colder sectors and that means a lot of frontal rainfall precipitation around and stronger winds so no consistent signal of anything massively cold no consistent signal for any heat wave by any means but unsettled westerly and windy and you can see those precipitation spikes at the bottom of the well showing that well now if we do have a look at the ecmwf ensembles again very similar if not a tad milder especially in the longer term still a lot of precipitation around especially on sunday we could be using quite a deluge especially in the south um, as we see that small low pressure system come in and we'll have a look at that in a minute on the uk metal this run because generally temperatures are around or below average for a small period of time uh, at, the, at the moment and then potentially around monday time but beyond that Mostly on summer members have temperatures remaining well above average. Only really the outlier on some members are getting 
below average or anything significantly below average so very mild spell coming up in terms of westerly flow it may not feel like that at the surface it may not feel like that on the thermometer but for the upper air temperatures it is much milder than average um, because of course wind and rain brings those temperatures down so yeah not looking great over the next couple weeks now, if we have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature. Now, you can see that wintering is pushing into the north over the next few hours, uh, over, over this evening, or this afternoon and evening, eventually sort of petering away, and things go quite dry through Friday evening, and that's where we can see quite widespread frost develop, especially further eastwards where we hold onto the clearer skies. Four weather fronts trying to push in through Friday evening and make their way through early hours of Saturday, snow and sleeping edge over higher ground before turning all to rain, and then through Saturday afternoon into Sunday, we see that heavy precipitation. One bad move through Saturday afternoon and then through Sunday morning big heavy precipitation moving through now this system if it was a little bit deeper I wouldn't be surprised to see it being named because of how localized it is how heavy that rain is and how likely we are to see some very strong winds with it and again if we have a look at these max wind gusts you can see when it does move through there could be some very strong wind gusts along the south coast 40 50 60 miles per hour I said if it was a bit deeper potentially could be named but at the moment, I wouldn't suspect it could be named with that level of winds, 40, 50 miles per hour, and generally heavier precipitation. Beyond that, though, things just turn westerly, unsettled. Heavy snow potentially through early hours of Tuesday. Again, day five, so uncertain. But again, it would be leading edge. It wouldn't last and it wouldn't hang around for long after it falls if we did see that scenario. Now, if we do have a max temperatures, you can see earlier this morning, pretty chilly, but still mild in the south, six, seven degrees. But those temperatures are not going to rise at all, really, today. Temperatures around six, seven, eight degrees for the high. Further northwards, much colder. Through Thursday evening to Friday, around freezing quite widely. Um, and then through Friday afternoon, five, six, seven degrees, really quite chilly. And then through Friday evening into Saturday, again, another frost potentially across the east, but temperatures are rising as cloud builds. And Saturday, again, seven to nine degrees highs, maybe a bit milder further westwards. Then through Saturday into Sunday, still quite mild, a big mild sector in the south as that uh, low pressure system moves in. And then generally things are around average um, to uh, slightly above and below average at times beyond that um, but I don't want to look too far ahead of that uh, because a lot of oscillating um, a lot of oscillating uh, air masses can give drastic differences depending on their timings if they come in the day or night or whatever so things can change very much uh, or very significantly but I'm not expecting anything too amazing it looks westerly unsettled and potentially stormy um, so yeah if you're looking for any cold weather or dry weather it's not looking good over the next few weeks so anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.